One of the first skills we have students try to master starting in kindergarten is it's breaking apart the numbers. So if we have the number seven, they would know that three plus four is seven. And we also talk about the commutative property of four plus three. They can do the same thing with two and five more, five and two, six and one, which is the same as one and six, and of course, zero and seven. So this is a skill that's very important for kindergarten and first grade students to master mentally. And when they get into the middle of first grade, they then start calculating with double digit numbers how this works with addition. If we had the number 38 and we wanted to add seven to it, students should mentally see right away that in order for 38 to get to the next multiple of 10, I would need two. So I'd want to use the number combination two and five. 38 plus two is 40, and then I mentally just need to add the five ones, which would give us a sum of 45. How this would work with subtraction, if we use our sum and go ahead and put it as a subtraction problem, and we wanted to subtract seven, we would go ahead and look and think, okay, 45, if I take five away from that, I can easily get down to the multiple of 10. So I'd wanna break the seven apart into five and two more. 40, I take 45 and I take, 40, take five away and I will get 40. Then I know that there's just two more that I need to subtract and that would be 38. So you can see how that mental math is important. Let's look at um, another one. If we were going to use the same strategy, let's say we wanted to look at something like 18, and let's say we wanted to add five to it. Again, the hope is that students will be able to know right away that in order to get five, I can use five and zero. I can use four and one, I can use three and two, and I can use the commutative property of any of those as well. So if I'm going to add five to 18, 18, two more would give me 20. So I'd wanna use the combination of two plus three. 18 and two more is 20, plus three more would give me 23. Let's say we wanted to look at 24 and we wanted to subtract six. Again, you wanna look at those number combinations that you should have in your head mentally. Two plus four should be the one that pops into your head because you can see the four in the ones place. So if I want to use four and two, I would go ahead and subtract the four from 24. I would get 20 and then I would just need to subtract two more to get 18. So I know that 24 take away six is 18. We always wanna try and look for these multiples of tens, an easy way to break numbers apart. So even as the numbers get um, larger, if we have 97 and we want to add nine to it, so we have 97. Well, 97 is only three away from a 100, so I should immediately think of the number combination that has three in it. Three and six more makes nine. So if I have 97, I add the three to it, I get to 100. And then all I need to do is add the six. When I do that, I know that my answer will then be 106. Going again, if we start with the number 85 and I want to subtract nine, I should immediately think about the number combination of, that makes nine, and that is five and four. So 85, I wanna subtract five, and I will get 80. Then I still have this four that I need to subtract from the 80. If I have 80 and I subtract four from it, I will get 76. This becomes difficult if students are not comfortable going across the multiples of 10 and they don't have the number sense and the number combinations of 10 to understand that easy calculation. That's why this beginning step, being able to break numbers apart, including the number of 10, is very important. I like to start looking at these four problems and continue 
practicing this strategy of breaking numbers apart. At this point, we're looking at double digit numbers and we're adding single digit numbers. Um, so I would like to go ahead and start with this problem, 56, and we're going to add 8 to try and find the sum. If I look at 56, 56 and I need to increase because we're adding, so the next multiple of 10 would be 60. I need to ask myself, what do I need to get from 56 to 60? And again, I'm going through this at a slow process, but this should be something quick that is happening within students' heads. So 56 and 4 more would make 60, so I need to break this 8 apart into 4 and 4 more. So 56 plus 4 will give me 60. Then I just need to take the 60 and add the 4 to it, and that will give me a sum of 64. Now I'd like to move over to this one which is a subtraction problem. And it's important to have students look at that symbol and know what that means to do. This means that our number, our answer, is going to, in this particular case, get smaller because we're dealing with whole numbers. If we look at 82, we are going to take 4 away. Well, I need to decrease down to my, multi my next multiple of 10, which will be 80, and I'll need to decrease by 2. So I need to break this four apart into two and two more. I'm taking 82 and I'm subtracting two from it and I get 80. Now I have 80 and I need to subtract two from that. This is another um, strategy that kids have a difficult time with. We are now looking at that 80 and counting back two. Young students sometimes are not comfortable with this. So we count back 79, 78 and we know that our difference is 78. We're now going to move down here to 48 and we're subtracting 9. Again, we need to realize that we are decreasing because we're subtracting. If we go down to our next lower multiple of 10, that will be 40 and I'll have to subtract 8 to get there. So this is going to be 8 and one more. That's how we're going to break our 9 apart. We have 48. We're going to subtract 8 and we will get 40 and then I have 40 and I need to take away one more from the 9 and I get 39. Next I would like to move over here. We have a triple digit number and we're decreasing again by a single digit number. So 126, my next lowest multiple of 10 is going to be 120. I need to subtract 6 to get there so the 8 is going to be broken apart into 6 and 2. I have 126 and I'm going to subtract 6 and I will get 120. Then I need to take my 120 and I need to subtract 2 from that to get to subtract the rest of my 8. And again, counting back, which can sometimes become a struggle, 119, 118. So the difference will be 118. You can see how being able to practice this strategy and knowing how to break numbers apart can become very beneficial. We'll go ahead and use this page for some practice and do a little bit more mental calculation. So let's look at 38. We know the 6 is going to be broken into 2 and 4. 38 and 2 more is 40. 4 more is 44. Then we go to the next one. We need three more to make 50. Three and four is seven. So we're going to use the three to make 50 and four more would be 54. Four and six is 10. That will take us to the decade number, the multiple of 10, 60. Break the three apart into one and two. That would give us 42. We have 45 and eight more. If we break this apart into the three and the five, we know that the 5 will give us to 50, and then 3 more will give us 53. Now let's go to the subtraction. We're going to break this apart into 3 and 1. That will get us to 80, and then 79 would be the difference. Take the 2 away, breaking this apart into 2 and 3, would be 90. 3 less would be 87. Break this into the 5 and 2, 40, minus 2 more would be 38. This one would be the 6 and 2, that would make us to 30, 
and then two less would be 28. We're going to break this one apart into the 8 and 1, get down to 20, and then one more would be 19. So again, that would take us into the mental calculation and being able to process through these a little bit faster.